It's your town. Get up and get involved. It's Wake Up Tucson with Joe Higgins and Christy Simone. All right. 7.22 in the a.m. on the Wake Up Tucson. We're here with uh, Coach Naya Butts from the U of A women's basketball program making her debut. Uh, hopefully on a long relationship when we get you back in and start talking about the team and what's going on. We've got to get out there and support them. So that's, Absolutely. That's what so now your story was really powerful. You uh, you got a, you got uh, recruited by Tennessee, and you happened to sit in two national championship games and be a very important part of winning those two things. Uh, you, were, you you coached with, was it Pat Summit? Was yes. That, was one of the, she's like the She's like the, the Dean guru Smith of, of college yeah, basketball, or Dean Smith, the Pat Summit of men's basketball. <laughs> like this yeah, she, she's actually, uh, you know, the Pat Summit of basketball is what I like to call her. She's... Um, uh, she kind of is in a class of her own, you know. She's the winningest coach, basketball coach, period. Yeah. Um, you know, especially at this level. Why is she so good? You know what? It's it's her intensity. It's her discipline. You know, that's the one thing. If people always ask me, what is the one thing you learn from being at Tennessee? You know, playing for Pat, and it was discipline, self discipline. You know, she would always say, discipline yourself, so no one else has to. And and I think uh, something that is so missing in this culture, oh, in this world, <laughs> in absolutely. the workforce. You mentioned what the kids are like today versus 15 years ago. We see it in the workforce as well. It's like who you're hiring. You know, it's are. I tell our kids all the time. I was in study hall yesterday. I stopped by study hall, and of course, you know, I get these big eyes like, oh my God, coach is here. Open the book. Um, <laughs> and you know, there's a cell phone sitting on the table. They're, they're not. She's not using it. One mm-hmm. of the players, uh, but. She's not supposed to even have it in her vicinity because it's like a magnet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, crack for berry. Yeah, lack of crack, focus. Yeah, right. um, and so I took it and put it in the uh, counselor's uh, desk. And, you know, I'm going, y- you guys make things so difficult. It's really easy. When you come into the room, you know you're not supposed to have the phone. Just give it to her. Right. And I always tell the kids, you know, do what you have to do now so that you can do what you want to do later. Oh, that's good. And if you can do that and think about that with everything you do as well, you're going to be fine. But they make things so difficult, yep. you know, like waiting to the last minute to study for that exam. Yeah. Well, we are a nation of <laughs> procrastinators. Right. Uh, absolutely. So, and, and you know, I'm guilty of that sometimes, but, you know, it, yeah. everybody has their moments. But in general, if you would do that, it makes things so much easier. So, Coach, you mentioned the story, and I heard this uh, at the Big Brothers, uh, the Steak and Burger. That's why you're here today. The, the story, your, your life story and how you moved from a smaller town in, in Georgia to the Tennessee and where you're at today. You got your master's in uh, education. education. So, really and then you've gone back and given back and you really be, you know you're a big part of the community as well right. so maybe you could tell the listeners that story to get to know you a little better um well you know obviously being from a small town um had a great uh family um, great upbringing you know mother was a strong mother father was involved but uh, they weren't married uh, weren't mm-hmm. together um but like i said i grew up in uh, public housing and the projects and all that but that wasn't my home mm-hmm. inside of my home was uh, just like any other, you know, person's home who who had the finer things in life. Sure. Um, it just wasn't in a material uh, sense. And so, you know, seeing a lot of things around me, um, a lot of things I didn't want to do. Um, oh. When I was able to do those, I, I was like, you know what, there are certain things I won't do. There's nothing wrong with, uh, you know, people having a drink here and there. I just decided I wouldn't do it. Um, I saw so much of that around me. And uh, I saw what it did to people, and and it was something that I said I would uh, never participate in, and I still never have to this day. And um, so, you know, moving from that situation uh, in terms of being in public housing and and growing up in there, I wouldn't change it for anything uh, because it shaped me, it molded me into a better person. It it allowed me to understand you can't take things for granted. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people take a lot of situations for granted. And... You know, when I moved uh, into my college dorm room, um, that was my move out of public housing. Mm-hmm. And so for me, uh, that was awesome. Um, mm-hmm. That that was a, a big thing. And, you know, being from a small town, you don't have a lot of restaurants and you don't have a lot of things that you can go to. You know, you see all these things. We didn't have all those chain restaurants and even the uh, Chili's and the Old Charlie's yeah, and yeah. things like that. So once I got in college and I started to... Uh, go frequent those restaurants because we would be traveling and everything and i'm a huge eater <laughs> i love food and so you're gonna fit right in with us you know way, yeah. I, I would go to those places and, and get to sit down at those restaurants and be like oh man this is this is awesome and so there are a couple things that i won't shortchange myself on uh food is one <laughs> um i will pay pretty much anything uh for food uh, it was because when i was growing up we did i didn't have those options um and i will go 
pretty much anywhere for entertainment in terms of vacations. I didn't go on, we, we just didn't have that luxury to go on family vacations here or family vacations there. And so now that I have an opportunity, uh, whenever I have uh, time to go places, I don't mind getting on a plane and, and just going yeah. uh, because I have the freedom to do that now. So now did, did your mom still in Georgia? Or she? Oh yeah, she, she's yeah. definitely still in Georgia. Um, She's uh, taking care of her mom right now, my mm. grandma. So, did you go back and help buy a home for her? I, I did. Um, my mom, Mother's Day, it's probably been about four years ago now, four or five years ago now. Um, I bought my mom a home, nice. uh, and it was a a big deal for me. I, I uh, hopefully she's not listening because she <laughs> might kill me for this. But uh, I, uh, when once I started working and coaching, I saved uh, a lot of my pretty much my money. And I saved it for about three to four years uh, when I first started coaching. And uh, once I got the job at Kentucky and I saved up enough money to put a down payment on the house and uh, so I can get the payment in case this coaching thing didn't work out. Of course, <laughs> at the time, I didn't know right. uh, it would really work out. Right. Um, but uh, in case it didn't work out, I wanted to be able to handle the house payment if I got a job and working in sure. you know the workforce like everybody else but this you know doing something that I love and my passion of basketball sometimes that you know it may or may not last and sure. but I wanted to make sure that I did that um and so I had the opportunity I was blessed enough uh, by the grace of God to be able to do that and and so it's great you know now when I go home I don't have to uh go back to anybody's else's property or house and my mom can stay there and that's awesome um, has she been out here to visit she, she out has she has she's been out here to visit several times she, she likes the desert i mean does she like it she loves it out here i, I love it when she's here we eat good you know <laughs> uh you know spend some time together but she's uh she's an amazing uh person strong woman Hey, two last things. The Naya rules we were talking about earlier. What, and yeah. now when you did these at the dinner, I wrote them down and my wife did too. So we, we, we use them on the kids. This is our... Okay, have our, they been working? Not at all. Not at all. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it takes a little time. You know, right. you yeah, the right. culture we were talking about. It's not the words. It's the implement, implementation. You know, that, you know that show, The Nanny, where they bring the nanny into right. the home? Are you open to coming in and doing the butts rules? You know what? House, I, am open, house? I am open to doing a lot of different things. We, we got to talk to my uh, representation. All right, all right, Good call. Right. <laughs> Good answer. Um, but... For me, uh, we write it on the board before every game. Um, and it's no excuses, no laziness, and no complaints. And I think if you can apply those to not only athletics but life, uh, things are going to be uh, a lot easier for you. Because the moment you start to complain about where you are and what your situation is, um, you know, there's always someone to your left or your right of you who are in much uh, – in a much worse place than you are. I think we're going to include that in a lot of politicians' oath of office <laughs> before, we, oh, yeah. before we move through here. <laughs> right, so, like business people. Hey, sure. let's go to a call real quick, and then I'll get to the most important question before we let you go. BBG, Ben Bueller Garcia, what's going on, bud? Hey, I just want to tell folks, if they haven't met Coach Bus, she is just an outstanding individual, and she's she's a real credit to our community. And I tell you what, uh, you know, if you haven't gone out to see the Lady Cats play, please do. It's it is really some exciting basketball. Um, it's, it's fundamentals. It's fun to watch. Uh, you know, I tell you, the thing, I've, I've had the chance to meet the coach personally, and the thing I love about her uh, is that she's not only coaching them as athletes, but she is really coaching them as, as to be members of our society, uh, you know, as, as good, productive members of our community, and I think that's just outstanding, and I hope folks will come out and support her and the, and the team. Absolutely. Thanks, Ben. Good, good comment. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. Thanks for the call. I, I, so far, what I've liked about it, I like that. You know, I like my wife and I say our primary thing is, as parents is to raise good human beings. Absolutely. It sounds like you're trying to train good human beings in addition to winning win basketball games, and you're uh, a pretty straight shooting uh, pistol. You know that. So I, I we definitely appreciate that. So. And she is a very sharp dresser on the court. <laughs> yeah, she is. I yeah. like that. The, yeah. the other coaches come in, and you know which one's our coach, the good-looking one over there. I would never so, use yeah. the word yeah. frumpy. Uh, yeah. no, 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 well, so. I hope not. I hope not. <laughs> All right. All right, real quick, we got your Aunt Valerie on the phone. Oh, my Seven nine zero two zero four. Aunt Valerie, welcome to the Wake Up Tucson show. How are you doing, dear? <laughs> I'm doing great this morning. How are you all? We're doing good, man. Naya's keeping us on our toes. Unbelievable. So tell us your most embarrassing Naya story here. we got to hear embarrassing Naya story. <laughs> well, I tell you, I just remember when she was a little girl, she'd be outside on these roller skates. Do you remember the iron roller skates? I do remember that. Of course that. they were iron. You know they had to be iron. <laughs> there were at least 
four sizes is too big for her, but she could skate in those as though they fit her perfectly. And we knew from that day she was destined for greatness. So we're very proud of Naya. We love her very much. And she says her mom is a very strong woman, but she's a very strong woman as well. So. Oh, that's and great. Valerie, where are you Are you in Tucson, or where are you calling from? No, I'm in America, Georgia. Oh, she is calling from Georgia. Awesome. Hey, so. if you have a photo of those iron skates with Naya, please send them oh, over here. We're going to have fun with those. Hey, <laughs> remember, you are my family. <laughs> And I love you. <laughs> love you, too. And Valerie, thanks for the call. Okay, you guys have a great day. Say hi to Mary for us. Naya, thanks for coming yeah, on. Great, great debut interview, and uh, we'll have lots of fun as we move through here. Hey, guys, I appreciate it. All thanks right. much. Coach Naya Butts, U of A women's basketball, and Valerie bring, keeping it real with a phone call <laughs> like that, too. So wake up, Tucson, 1030, The Voice. We're going to jo- stay in the sports pool. We're going to talk about this Tucson really – have it in them to support stuff in here, uh, whether it's U of A or not. So wake up, Tucson, 1030 The Voice. Step right up and don't be shy. Chris and Joe are moving the needle. The local volume is increasing on Wake Up Tucson, morning 6 to 8 on AM 1030 KVOI, The Voice.